But I suppose the best place to start, uh, Christina, is what is Iron Cell? Yes, Iron Cell is a novel technology with which one can make uh, fibers, and these fibers are very suitable for textiles, for instance, but not just for textile, but also, also for other purposes like composites, for instance, and for different types of packaging materials. So you've described it as a technology. So what, how does it work? What, uh, what, what do you have at the beginning? What does it go through and what do we get at the end? So, so at the beginning you have different type of cellulosic materials with which you get started. You can have a pulp material, for instance. You can have recycled uh, cotton textiles. Uh, then you solubilize these uh, fibers to a special liquid. We call it ionic liquid. And then the material will be solubilized. And then from that solution, we spin uh, fibers. They are not yarn, yarns at that point yet, but then we get fibers and then we process the fibers and we make uh, yarns and from the yarns we can make fabrics and from, from uh, the fabrics we can make uh, different types of textile, for instance. And Yeni, uh, cellulose fibers, um, we've, we've had some examples of that, so pulp is cellulose fibers, um, cotton is cellulose fibers. What, for anyone at home is thinking of well, cellulose fibers, what does that mean? What, what are the, what, is there a nice definition or are there more examples and give people an idea? Um, well, right, so it's already in the nature. So cellulose is not something that we just produce and make. Um, it's, for example, in various kinds of plants. Um, and Christina, as a, as a chemist, certainly has a uh, better definition for this, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, for, for the chemist, it's a simple polymer. So uh, sugar components are joined together, make a polymer, and they are so-called glucose mo molecules, which are joined together, and that makes cellulose. And cellulose is, like already mentioned, the, the major material for uh, plants. Like uh, it's a structural polymer together with uh, other components like ling lignin and hemicellulose. So it's all around us. It's even all around. If you are not aware of it at home you will be engaging with cellulose fibers every single day. Um, how do you, so, and, and the idea of the iron cell technology is that you're somehow able to take a material back to that cellulose level. Is that, if I'm, am I interpreting that correctly? I sort of wanted to make sure, I'm not a chemist myself, so I want to make sure that I'm understanding and explaining it properly. No, for instance, if you have pulp, so you get started with a pulp material, and from pulp you could uh, make also paper or packaging materials, but in this case, if you have pulp, so it's not uh, as such a good material to make yarns, so you need to solubilize it first to get it in the form from which you can start to make yarns. And if you start from uh, used jeans, for instance, so you're not able to make yarns out from that material, so you need to solubilize that first and, and make yarns out of that. And you've actually brought some things in that can make this even more real for us. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe we actually have some used jean stuff on the table here. Yes, yes we do. So this is cotton waste and this is made from used jeans and it has not been dyed so it keeps its colour. It's very soft. It is very, mm. very soft. So this has this been through any process? Has this been through the iron cell process yet or through the... So you solubilise this? Yes, so, right? yeah, so that's correct. So it is uh, solubilized. So the genes material is first uh, uh, solubilized in the ionic liquid and then it's spin to fiber. It's not yarn yet, but then you get that type of fiber material. So this is like the core material that we yes. can then use to okay. turn it into... To turn it into yarn. Um, and feel free, let me see if I can find the loose end here. So feel free to test. It's actually really, really strong. And once again, it has not been dyed. Um, it keeps its original color. And this is just one example. If you look at the white examples here, how you could actually make a different kind of a product depending on which raw material you use. So this is used jeans and used cottons. This one here is from perch. So this is 100% perch pulp. Which um, would normally be used for 
Uh, well, for example, in forestry industry, yeah. that's what you have as a, as a byproduct, um, and you use it for lots of kinds of um, further product developments as well in the forestry industry. Yeah, for instance, paper you can make out from pulp. Lovely. And so this is just a fine yarn that then can be... And this, as to go from that to this, is that a process that exists just in the regular textile industry already? Yes, that is a well-known and established technology, so nothing new in that. So it, the, that material, it's been through the iron cell technology, it's then able just to be whatever large scale industry process already exists, we can put it through that. And then at the end, we get actual fabrics, I think you've brought with us, is that right? Is that a scarf on the desk or? That is a scarf indeed. <laughs> yes, this is a scarf and, and I think you mentioned this is a soft material, so, so it is very comfortable and that's why it's, it's very suitable for uh, textile purposes. Uh, it's also strong, like already mentioned, so it makes a good quality fabric. And what is also important is that you can dye it. You can you, that's where we have the samples for dyeing, so you can use a regular uh, textile colors to get the, the suitable and desired color for this. So, so very many uh, advantages of this material. We haven't mentioned that yet, but, but I think one of the most important uh, um, uh, well, quality measurements for, for this is that, that this material is, uh, is uh, uh, decomposed when it is in nature. For it's instance, yeah, it's biodegradable material. And this is a great advantage, for instance, if you compare it to, to uh, fossil-based uh, plastics. So you will not end up having that type of massive programs like what we have with, uh, with uh, plastics, or you will not end up having microplastics because the material is, is decomposed. Uh, microorganism will, will uh, degradate the material and use it for their um, uh, energy source. I mean, something to say about this scarf is it actually looks like a regular scarf, and, which I suppose is. is the point. It is, yes. <laughs> yes. It, it is. It's just biodegradable. And if you, if you think about buying a normal scarf, normally you have mixed fibres. Um, so some of it is completely fine in a way, na nature-wise. It would be biodegradable possibly if it's cotton, depending on how it's been treated. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it's mixed with polyester, for example, and there you go, because it's then very hard to take those two fibres apart and somehow reuse them again. Um, so here, if we have 100% pure iron cell, uh, it is biodegradable and you can reuse it again. So it's, it's done in a closed loop process. Um, and we can reuse the material again and again, not, not forever. Um, and it is still a research project, obviously. Um, so uh, we need to test that. We need to see how, you, how, how long we can use the same material. Um, but compared now, nowadays, for example, how cotton is used or polyester in fast fashion, this is quite a step forward. So just on the biodegrad biodegradability point, sometimes it can it's a simple idea and then sometimes these bio, the idea of something being biodegradable is more complex than it seems. For example, um, a lot of things that are compostable actually need to be composted in an industrialised process. Mm -hmm. is, are you, what you're saying about that scarf is that if you accidentally dropped it, you know, on the, in, you know, when you're out for a walk in the park, it would just biodegrade there or does it actually need to go into a process? It doesn't need to go, go to any process because in the nature there are lots of processes ongoing which can use this material. They are microorganisms which will, will uh, degradate uh, with, the, with the help of the enzymes to this uh, material to, to sugars which they can uptake and convert to chemicals or convert to biomass. And that biomass can be used uh, for uh, other types of, of organisms and it, it becomes part of the, the, the uh, food cycle, I would say. But it's probably fair to say you're not necessarily, um, you're not necessarily encouraging people to chuck the scarves on the ground, because presumably if you get that material back, that you can actually turn, like, can you put it back through the iron cell process, for example, or turn it back into the same quality yarn or similar quality like yarn? Is that, is that we, we can, and we certainly don't encourage them to do that, especially not these because these are handmade and we have very <laughs> few samples, so definitely not. Um, but yeah, we, we can reuse that. Um, and and, and that's, that's the funny thing, that when it goes through the iron cell process, um, it actually gets stronger. So normally when you reuse fibers and you use them again and again, the quality of them gets, gets worse. 
because the fibers get shorter and they, they fragment. Uh, whereas in, in this process with the um, ionic liquid, it actually keeps its strength, strength and it gets stronger. So if we have original cotton and then we have material um, like this, this is stronger than the original. And, and it's, that's really one of the unique points that we have here with Iron Sound. So it's not dependent on the length of the input fibres, it's dependent on the mixture, the soluble mixture that is made through the process. Yeah, it, it uh, still depends on the length of the polymer you use and, and uh, it is a, a target of research how many times we can actually re uh, recycle these, uh, these fibres. But like explained by Jenny, so our preliminary results, they suggest that you can do that many, many times, but how many that needs to be, be uh, studied further. But of course, if it, well, you can, because it's a cellulose-based material, presumably you can cascade it or, or it can biodegrade once it gets to the point where you can't cycle it back mm. through the process again. Example, uh, this is an example of ion cell which is made from uh, used uh, newspapers. So yesterday's newspaper and it's, uh, it's, um, the colour looks like this. And, and uh, this is a relatively good starting material for dyeing to different colours. So yesterday's yeah. news can become the fabric of the future. A absolutely, yeah. yes. <laughs> Um, and it looks and feels quite a lot like linen, um, yeah. so you know you you could have something your your dress made out of that, um, and that is the original color. Like like Christina mm -hmm. said, it has not been dyed. It can be dyed, and that was kind of the purpose of these samples here earlier, just to show that we can either keep the original color or it can also be dyed. So it's possible it has um, has those kinds of um, abilities that it does take the dye in if that is added. Uh, uh, last year. In the Independence uh, Day reception, the first lady of Finland actually used uh, an evening dress made uh, of this material, and I think that's the the, that's the fabric. The material, yeah. So if you want to feel it, it's it's very very soft, um, and it's made from perch pulp. So it's basically these examples you he see here. Um, that's the end product, and. Um, it took students and uh, experts from all fields that Alta University has to, to come up with this dress uh, because the design was done, uh, the, this was all the, the fabric, everything from scratch was made by hand. So you can just imagine the, uh, the amount of work and time and the value of such a unique piece. Um, and that's why it was done for the First Lady of Finland um, to be worn at that gala. Again, that's a material that feels, you know, I, I, if you hadn't told me it was iron cell, I guess I wouldn't have necessarily thought, oh, that's anything different than, than normal. But you, it's not just the first lady who's worn your material. I think we've got an image that shows um, another famous person who's, um, who's been, uh, uh, has had iron cell on them. Um, how did uh, the French president, Emmanuel Macron, end up with uh, that, almost that same scarf for the looks yes. of it? Um, yeah, well, uh, he came to visit and we obviously wanted to show the iron cell facilities. They are still relatively small, uh, but they are there and we wanted to show him that, okay, this is, this is something that, that we do here. This is something that's new. This is something that can change the world of, of textiles and biomaterials in general. Um, so we made a small example for him. Um, and, and this is, this is kind of leftover fabric um, of what, what he has there. Um, and, I, and I hope that he still remembers how rare that is because um, there aren't many people in the world with that kind of a scarf. Um, There's something um, in the way you described Alto, it's obviously a relatively new university. I want to just to dwell on and pick up on is the fact that it, it seemed like there's quite a big focus on breaking some of the silos that exist traditionally between departments and that's kind of somehow central to actually the ability to make something like Iron Cell. Is that, is that true and how, is that, how does that work at Alto? Yeah, that is uh, very true. Uh, so we know and we have noticed that uh, the breakthroughs and, and big inventions very often they take place when the different disciplines are connected. And this is exactly what we want to do in art also break uh, through the break the, the silos and, and uh, let the people, let possibilities for people to work together and, and do science together. And indeed, within iron cell, I guess there's a very much a, it requires science and chemistry, um, 
all the way through to actually requiring design and the ability to create things that someone like the First Lady or Emmanuel Macron will actually be happy wearing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and that's something that is quite unique because we have a lot of visitors who come and they see the chemistry side of it um, and they're happy with that. But then they're really overwhelmed when they can see that actually we can work with the material further. It doesn't just end there. Um, but we can actually spin it, we can make yarn, we can make different kinds of fabrics. And as you can see here in some of the samples, um, it's, it's very versatile. It can be used in various ways, which then for our fashion students is a, is a real bonus um, because, they, because they can test it. And we've had few example pieces like evening gowns and various dresses that we've shown in Paris, for example, in our, our fashion shows and in Helsinki as well. Um, and also in New York, in fact, uh, in, in June. Um, so those are the best ones to kind of give the image, what is this in reality, what is it really doing? Um, because if you just see a little bit of yarn, you're like, okay, yeah, that's yarn, that's nice. Um, but when you can actually see what can be made out of it, and you can think, I mean, we hope that no one does that, but you can see that way that, okay, you wear your evening gown, and then you put it in your biodegradable waste bin, and that's it. Nothing is left of that after a certain amount of time. That's, that's quite different when you uh, compare to the fashion industry and how it normally works. Yes, yeah, so cu currently we are still working in a lab scale. So, so we're doing experiments in the several milliliters or liter scale. But we are also building a pilot line in Otaniemi in Espo, which should be ready next year. And the pilot line would uh, let us uh, study this process further. And for instance, uh, study more the re uh, recycling of the ionic liquid, the solvent. So it's very important that we can recycle the, the solvent uh, many, many times. And uh, uh, we, we can also get more material from the pilot line, because at the moment we are a bit uh, limited because the, the amounts we can provide, they are still relatively small. Uh, and and uh, from the pilot line, we can also get more evidence that this is working, the process is working like, like what we have been planned. And uh, the next step from the pilot, pilot line and, and from the pilot experiment would be upscaling that to, to a larger and industrial scale. And this we hope that it will be done sometimes after 2023. We are also looking for industrial collaborators. So we, we've talked with uh, quite a few fashion houses um, and heard input from them as well. But we're obviously very interested in hearing um, the, the perspective from the industry. Uh, what is it that they need, what they are interested in? Um, because it's al already important in this kind of a research um, stage uh, to take that into account. For example, we have the right kind of a fiber length, but, but issues like that, um, that the industry in a way might take for granted and think that everyone knows, but it's, it's just important to go through those together.